So before you ask, I did not see the second post credit scene because, well, this movie's almost three hours long. It largely takes place underwater and I really had to pee. Tragically, Chadwick Boseman has passed away, so King T'Challa is no more. But good news, everyone. Remember his sassy sister from the first movie? Well, in this movie, she's not sassy. We get to see her go through all stages of grief. Depression, anger, depression, playing video games, and of course, depression. And after about two hours, she puts on the Black Panther suit to fight Namor the Submariner. I really don't know how to feel about this one. On the one hand, it's sort of a celebration of Chadwick Boseman, and there's a lot of beautiful emotional moments in it. But on the other hand, it's all over the place. And it reminded me a lot of Eternals, which, as far as good movies go, isn't one. I do feel bad for director Ryan Coogler because this was not easy. Chadwick Boseman passed away when Coogler already had a rough draft of the script. From what I've heard, uh, there's not a big change thematically, uh, because the first draft was also about grief. But instead of the loss of a loved one, it was T'Challa grieving the five years he lost because of the blip. And obviously, that has changed. But because of that, there are a lot of things in this movie from the original script that should have been cut. I'm just gonna tell you about some of the elements and plot points of this movie, because there are a lot of moving parts. So, here's your warning. So first of all, this movie takes place after the blip, and T'Challa has died from an unknown illness. With the Black Panther gone as protector, we now have a global conflict. Other countries are looking for vibranium, and Wakanda is still cautious about sharing its technology. But something happens that makes Wakanda look really bad in the public eye. Uh, this involves Martin Freeman's character, Everett Ross, and this is all still pretty interesting. Then we have a kidnapping and the introduction of a new Marvel superhero, which is Riri Williams, Ironheart. That's not a spoiler, she's in the trailer. After that, we get the introduction and backstory of our villain Namor the Submariner. And, and I have some issues with his motivations in this movie, but I'll come back to that. Then there's another conflict, this time between the Queen of Wakanda and General Okoye, who in my opinion is the most interesting character of the entire film. But Okoye just disappears for most of the movie, because other stuff needs to happen, I guess. Then in the third act, and this was clearly part of the original first draft, Nakia comes back for some reason. Now, I love Lupita Nyong'o, but her character returning wasn't really necessary until the first end credits. Then, all the way in the third act, and again, this is a spoiler, someone else dies. So to sum up, we have the death of King T'Challa, a global conflict, Martin Freeman, introducing Ironheart, introducing Namor, conflict between the Queen and Okoye, and Nakia returning. That is a lot even on paper. But remember, Ryan Coogler had to switch his protagonist, so now we have to add another thing. Because as an audience, we don't really know Shuri all that well. Yeah, she had a couple of moments in the previous film and a little bit of screen time in Infinity War, but now she's the hero of the story, which means the movie has to play catch up with her character development, and that takes time. It's like when a video game makes you switch characters halfway through the game and you have to relearn all the controls. Except this time, it never switches back. So Shuri is mourning the loss of her brother and trying to figure out how to restore the heart-shaped herb while she's also struggling with her faith. And yes, eventually becomes the new Black Panther in the last half hour of the movie. I think this film would have been a lot better if they stripped down the script. Just have this movie be about the loss of T'Challa, the conflict with Namor, and eventually Shuri becoming Black Panther. Everything else in this movie is only slowing down the narrative. So, about Namor and his motivations. Namor's kingdom is called Talokan, and same as Wakanda, has access to Vibranium. In order to protect his home, Namor wants Wakanda to join forces with him to overthrow the world. Which, sure, I guess. But this is after the blip. So where was Talokan when everyone was fighting Thanos? I mean, how about a little gratitude, Fishman? I was looking forward to this movie because I was really curious. 
And I did think the emotionally charged scenes were handled really well. It shows a lot of respect for Chadwick Boseman and everyone in the movie does a good job. But as far as the rest of the movie goes, the story is a mess. All the CG battles aren't very exciting and the most interesting character suddenly disappears from the movie. I just didn't enjoy this one as much as I hoped. So I do not recommend Wakanda Forever. You know, at times like these, I'm reminded of the immortal words of Gandhi, who said, and I quote, I believe Ghostbusters 2 is the perfect sequel. <laughs> Oh, Gandhi, you were so wrong.